So let's look at the following example that will deal with simple harmonic motion of a simple pendulum. So we have a simple pendulum that is 0.3 meters long. If at time equals 0 seconds that pendulum is released from rest at an angle of 10 degrees, assuming our simple harmonic motion, we'd like to calculate the angular position at a time equals 0.35 seconds and the angular position at time equals 3 seconds. So let's begin by looking at our diagram. So our pendulum begins at the maximum displacement given by an angle of 10 degrees. So we let our object go and the pendulum begins to swing. So we want to find the angle after A 0.35 seconds and B after 3 seconds. So we're assuming that this orange vertical axis represents an angle of zero. So going from zero to this makes a 10 degree angle and going from zero to this makes a negative 10 degree angle. So let's recall the relationship between radians and degrees. So we know that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians and we're going to need to use this fact in our equation. So because we're assuming our simple pendulum is under simple harmonic motion, we have the following general equation that gives us our displacement of the object, the position of the object in meters with respect to time. So this equation gives us this quantity x. Now, Notice that this is our amplitude, this is our angular frequency, and this is our phase angle. Now, because our object begins at the maximum displacement, at the positive maximum displacement, that means that our phase angle is zero. So our phi is zero. What about our A? Well, the A, the maximum displacement, is equal to our X, which is equal to our length of our chord multiplied by our degree measure in radians. So we can simply take this quantity and plug it into our A. Now, what about our omega? What is our angular frequency? Recall that angular frequency is equal to the square root of K divided by M. And because K is equal to G times M divided by L, we plug that into K and we get the following result. So our omega is replaced with this quantity. So we get the following equation, and this equation gives us our displacement of our pendulum as it swings back and forth. The displacement given in meters. So we can use this equation to calculate our displacement in meters and then convert that into our degree measure. That's exactly what we're going to do. So we begin with the following equation. So our theta is given to be 10 degrees and our L is given to be 0.3 meters. Now we can't actually use our degree measure because we have to first convert 10 degrees into radians because this degree measure is actually given in radians. So because 180 degrees is equal to pi radians, that means 10 degrees is equal to pi radians multiplied by 10 divided by 180. And that gives us uh, 0.3 divided by 18 pi when we multiply our radians times our L of 0.3. Now, what about the inside? What is this quantity? Well, 9.8 meters per second squared divided by L, 0.3, and if we take the square root of that division, we get the following quantity, about 5.72 T. So this equation gives us our position of the object when the object follows the following arc. So, if we take this equation and we plug it in part A, a time value of 0.35 seconds, we get negative 0.022 meters. The negative simply means our object is somewhere on this 
arc. So the negative simply means we're going this way. And so at 0 0.022, we're somewhere on this line. So we want to convert this quantity, this arc length, into radians. Recall that our radians is equal to x divided by L, where x was this found quantity. So we have negative 0 0.022 divided by L, which is 0 0.3, and we get negative 0 0.73 radians. And now we have to convert radians back to degrees to find our actual angular position at this time value. So we simply take this quantity, multiply it by 180, and divide by pi to convert it to our degree measure. So that means our approximate degree measure at time equals 0.35 seconds is negative 4.02 degrees. So this negative simply means we're 4 degrees in this direction. So we're about here. Now, what about part B? Well, we follow the same exact step. We take our equation for our position function with respect to time. We plug in our time and we get a value of negative 0.0062 meters. So we take this quantity, we convert it into radians by using this formula. X, this quantity divided by L, gives us negative 0.021 radians. Now we multiply this 180 and divide by pi to convert it to degrees, and we get a degree measure of negative 1.18 degrees. Once again, the negative simply means we're dealing with this arc. So negative 1.18 is somewhere right here. So our object is right here after time of three seconds.